Hi, welcome again to Art Shorts. If you've been on the Bergen Community College campus, you may have noticed a spot by the parking garage as you're driving up the main entrance to the right as you head towards the loop. There are four 15 foot tall poles defining a cube shape sticking up from the ground. You probably wouldn't have realized that this is actually a sculpture. It was created and installed in the 1970s back in the college's early days by sculptor Forrest Frosty Myers. It's put in place before the parking garage and most of the campus even existed. But it occupied a really neatly groomed lawn and it was a, an example of minimalist sculpture, which was very popular at the time. Unfortunately, that whole area has become overgrown. It's become a de facto storm sewer containment marsh. Beehives are later put in. It's a mess. Uh, we're going to rehabilitate the sculpture and the landscaping, but that's not the story here. We're gonna talk about the moon and the first moon art museum. That's right, Forrest Myers the sculptor whose work is on BCC's campus, sent a miniature art museum to the moon. Myers was part of a, a vibrant art scene in downtown New York City during the 1960s and 70s. His minimalist sculptures were part of collections and museums around the world, the Whitney, the Tate, others. It's most famous for a piece that still uh, exists at 599 Broadway. It's called The Wall, or also called The Gateway to Soho. It's eight stories tall, and it's affixed to the side of a building. Um, he's a fixture on the art scene for decades, and his work, uh, both sculpture and furniture, tends towards minimalism or pop. It almost always has a sense of humor. And there was this sense of humor and vision that in 1969 um, led him to conceive of creating an art museum on the moon. You see, 69 space was the place. Apollo 11 landed astronauts on the moon. Less than six months later, Apollo 12 was scheduled to be launched on a second lunar mission. And Myers got the idea that there should be an art museum on the moon. He says, my idea was to get six great artists together and make a tiny little museum that would be on the moon. The artists came from his group of friends and they included luminaries like Andy Warhol, Robert Rauschenberg, David Navros, Klaus Oldenburg, John Chamberlain, and it almost included Allen Ginsberg, but because he didn't read his mail for a couple of months, uh, he never saw the invitation. Myers attempted several times to get this project sanctioned officially by NASA, and he claims they just never gave him a response. They just gave him an endless runaround. So he did what any self-respecting artist would do. He smuggled it on board. He first, he contacted it a group called Experiments in Art and Technology, better known as EAT. And EAT was a nonprofit group that tried to bring engineers and artists together to create new works. And through EAT, Myers was introduced to scientists from Bell Labs. This is based in New Jersey, Bell Laboratories, uh, specifically Fred Waldhauer. Bell was the Silicon Valley of the 60s and 70s. It was home to nine Nobel laureates. And using techniques normally used to produce telephone circuits, scientists etched the drawings Myers had gathered onto small ceramic wafers, really tiny little wafers. And either anywhere from 16 to 20 of these wafers were created, with one going on the Apollo 12 lunar lander, and the rest, copies of the original, given out to artists and others involved in the project. See, NASA was going back and forth about what they would do, whether they'd allow it on the module, but Waldauer devised another plan, and he worked with a, a Grumman aircraft engineer who was working directly on the Apollo 12 lander, and he was willing to place the wafer on it. But it was kind of touch and go. They didn't know if it actually would get placed, and it wasn't until Myers received a telegram when he knew for sure. And at 3.35 p.m. on November 12th, less than two days before Apollo 12 was set to take off, Myers received the telegram at his house from Cape Canaveral, Florida, stating, you're on, A-OK, -okay. all systems go. 
The existence of the work wasn't revealed to the public until Myers informed the New York Times, which ran an article on the project on November 22nd, while Apollo 12 was in transit from the moon back to Earth. There are six artworks located on the ceramic tile, each one in black and white. Starting at the top left is Andy Warhol's signature, a combined A and W, which of course could also be interpreted as a penis. As Myers said in an interview, he was being the terrible bad boy. The Times published a photo of the wafer. The photographer covered Warhol's contribution, lest they offend the Times' sensitive audience. It's a dick pic. Next is a single line by Robert Rauschenberg, the ultimate minimalist piece. Uh, to its right is a black square with thin white lines intersecting, resembling a piece of circuitry by David Navros. Below it is John Chamberlain's contribution, a template pattern which resembles circuitry. In the lower middle is a geometric variation on Mickey Mouse by Klaus Oldenburg, and this was a very popular motif for this artist at that time. And Forrest Myers himself created the work in the lower left, a computer-generated drawing. So Myers helped curate and transport the very first art museum to the moon. Think of him, Andy, Klaus, David, and Robert, and John, as you walk past those four poles by the Bergen County Community College parking garage. This is Art Shorts. <laughs>